best last season and their high expectations for this year. But that upset loss to Fresno State really caused some concerns as we have the kickoff. Boilermakers with the football as Virginia Tech won the toss. They've opted to defer. And we're going to go see our first look at the Texas transfer, Hudson Carr, the red shirt junior. He's out of Austin, Texas, played high school at Lake Travis there in Austin. Made his debut for Purdue last week against Fresno State, and what a debut it was. He went 17 for 30, 254. Also threw for two TDs for the Boilermakers. Devin Maccabee, Tyron Tracy Jr. in the backfield alongside Carr. Carr's gonna throw and swings it out to Tracy, and it's incomplete. You know, because life comes at you fast. A year ago this time, Hudson Carr was quarterbacking Texas against Alabama in that big game last year. Rest assured that after this game, he'll watch his old teammates tonight take on Alabama. He had him on the ropes, too. Purdue will go five wide. Card again, this time to the tight end. And he's close to a first down. Garrett Miller makes the catch. He's a couple of yards shy of a first down for Purdue. Card spent three years in Texas. Never could win the job there. Casey Thompson was around. And then Quint Ewers transferred in. Then Archie Manning, Vic recruit, number one in the country, comes in. And at that point, it became clear that Card needed to move on, and he's restarting his career with Purdue. Had five career starts. Here's we've got an injured Hokey on the field. That's Keontae Jenkins. He's the senior out of Jacksonville. And he plays that star position, 6'3", 215, that hybrid spot where sometimes rushes, sometimes plays coverage. So Purdue will be looking at third down and two. You say third down? That was an issue was for the Boilermakers. Not good. That was not good for them last Two week. of 11 on third down against Fresno State last week. They could not find a way to stay on the field. Maccabee alongside Card. Over the middle, and that's complete. The T.J. Sheffield, it's a first down and plenty more. They'll move the sticks. Now this offense is a modified air raid system, system that Mike Leach created, the late, great Mike Leach. It's just one of those little drags across the middle, a little, a little inside route to pick up the first down. The passing attack is air raid based, but there's so much run game in it that it's not a true air raid. Maccabee, first carry. He bullies his way to the 45-yard line. Graham Harrell is the offensive coordinator, grew up in the air raid, played for Mike Leach. He said he lost his air raid card when he started running the ball a bit much, but he's determined to get that card back. He wants to air it out a bit more. And the guy you need to keep your eye on is Dion Burks. Burks is at the top of your screen. Card looking, and he's looking for Burks. Burks has got speed, throws it incomplete. Jalen Jones was back there, and so was Dorian Strong, one of the best cover corners for the Hokies. Yeah, he missed a wide open receiver, though. You know, when you face the air raid, you have to take away the middle of the field and the corner. Now, they really take away the middle of the field, but there is a corner route wide open that is completely missed. Watch, look to the left of your screen. Look at the wide open throw there. Should have been a throw there, wide open. Third down for the Boilermakers. Sheffield in motion. Carr looks left, under pressure. Throws, complete to Sheffield. He's got a first down and slips. What a play. Card is Nine really, yard pickup. Yeah. Card is really good on the move. He's not afraid to throw on the run. He's also not afraid to run the ball.
Purdue now in the Hokey territory. To the outside, he's got a wide open Max Clare. And the tight end is inside the red zone at the 19. Monsoor Delane makes the stop for Virginia Tech. Moving fast, spreading the ball around. This is a better pace for Purdue. You know, because they only ran 65 plays last week. Their normal is around 75. Take a look at this play. You'll see just an out and up at the bottom by the tight end because the defender on that side chose the underneath receiver. Never choose the underneath receiver. 27-yard pickup. Draw, Maccabee. And he's brought down at the 15. We'll go back to plays because, you know, Graham Harrell likes to get 75, 80 plays. Last week ran 66. So he's determined this week to pick up the pace. We know that the new clock rule has shaved about six plays off per game across the country. Here's Maccabee again, left side, breaks the tackle. Maccabee inside the five, touchdown, Purdue! There's an answer for you. Opening drive score by the Purdue Boilermakers as Devin Maccabee goes 15 yards to the house. Yeah, just an outside zone, he makes a perfect read, and the mark of a good back make that guy miss. He made two miss. A young man who's really come on. Didn't get enough touches in the first half of the game last week. They were determined to get him involved early, and he's responded. Yeah, how about Maccabee? Put on scholarship, too, by Coach Walters on his first day as head coach. Extra point is good, and it is the Boilermakers. Up 7-0 as they go down and score on their first opening drive. This wasn't no score as Purdue takes the opening kick and goes nine plays, 75 yards. They did it in three minutes, 34 seconds. Devin Maccabee with the score. Maccabee with his 11th career rushing touchdown. And Purdue, who was just two of 11 on third down last week, two for two on third downs on that drive, Rob. Kind of stunned this crowd, you know. They had entered the Sandman. They were all excited on their feet. And now, they're all sitting down. In the rain. Yeah. Rain continues to fall here in Blacksburg. Julio Macias coming back from a groin injury will kick things away. Bajal Tutin and Malachi Thomas back deep for the Hokies. So here comes Grant Wells. He's the transfer out of Marshall, the quarterback and Rich Shirt senior. And last week, 17 to 25, threw for 252. Also accounted for four touchdowns, three of them through the air. He also did one with his feet. Comes into this game, making 35 consecutive starts at quarterback, 12 of those here at Virginia Tech. Played a lot of football. He's gonna have to be patient and make sure he sees what's happening defensively. First pass, a slant, incomplete. They're looking for Jalen Lane, but there's a flag. And I think they're going to get Cam Allen. Pass interference. Defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. ACC officials, Riley Johnson is our referee for the day. And Grant Wells knows that he is the man on the spot. He is facing a defense that lives by a code. The man's got to have a code, right? The defense has a code that the quarterback must be hit and hit often. They're coming after him in a lot of different ways. Wells again through the air. Again to Jalen Lane. Lane is across midfield in Purdue territory. Allen makes the stop. We will be seeing Jay Lane a lot today as he picks up 21. Yeah, this is an NFL-style defense that Ryan Walters has implemented here. Not a lot of teams play it. There's a player down. Oh, yeah, that, that's a hurt one. That's Ali Jennings. 
They call him Popcorn Jennings. He had two touchdown catches last week. We'll check on him. Touchdown catches last week against his old program and got rolled up on here. Back to the action. And it's Bay Schultz Hooten with the carry. Octavius Brothers, they call him OC. Yeah, because this defense is unique. Five man front by and large, one linebacker in the middle, and a nickel back. They dare you to run inside. They eat up the A gap, B gap, and their free safety plays 20 to 25 yards deep to take away the middle. Loss of three. Wells in that play as the flags come flying in. Snap infraction by the center. Five yard penalty. Second down. Keep it more. That's on Caden Moore. He's the redshirt junior out of Pennsylvania. Now, he's made 25 consecutive starts, but this is the first season where he's the center. He had to move yeah. from right guard to center. Yeah, and this, this defense, Ryan Walters, believes in man to man coverage 66% of the time last week, and that's low for him. So you know you're going to get a lot of man coverage. You've got a safety deep in the middle. He really can't help you on slant routes. And Fresno State did a lot of that, and there was some of that to start this game. They'll keep it on the ground. And that's Tootin trying to string it out to the left. Malachi Langham with the stop. The rain continues to fall here in Blacksburg, and now coming down a little bit harder. Yeah, and trying to run inside against this front is crazy. I mean, that, that front, the three defensive linemen, with their hand on the ground. All of them are 300 pounds. They it cover the up the inside. Oh, yeah. The strength of this Boilermaker D. Third and 18 for Virginia Tech. They were 50% last week. Eight of 16. Here's Wells. Steps up in the pocket and overshoots everyone. Yeah, he misread that, too. Nice disguise on the back end by Purdue. They showed a two-deep coverage and then tweaked it to a three-deep. Wells thought that there was a wide-open receiver to the left side, but there was a man coming over. Watch the disguise. You see the nickelback drop into that area? That would have been a pick had that ball been thrown. Right now, Purdue firing on all cylinders, offensively and defensively. Peter Moore will have to punt things away for Virginia Tech and back deep. Marquise Wilson at his own 15 for Purdue. It drops inside the five. And they're going to down that at the three. A 51-yard punt by the Hokies. Hey, is it me or is that rain coming down a lot oh, harder now? It is. It's coming down in buckets. I mean, it here looks in Plattsburgh. Like, like sheets. Wow. You know, the thing with rain, you can throw the ball in the rain if you keep the ball dry. What it does to a defense, it hurts your pass rush. Harder for big guys to get around the edge, plant and go get the quarterback. And as a defensive back, you're a lot more careful. You cannot play on the edge of your feet. A little bit more flat footed. So you can throw if you keep the ball dry. Card standing in his own end zone from the gun. Hands it off. And this is Dylan Downing. Downing seeing his first action. He's a senior out of Carmel, Indiana. A five yard pickup for Purdue. Purdue had trouble running last week. Trying to rectify that. More committed to it this week. I expect to see Hudson Card run more, too. Play fake. Swing it out. The tr Tracy. And he is tripped up at the 11. Tell me, partner, how would you feel if you were Hudson Card? You grew up in Austin. You, your dream school was Texas. You wanted to go to biz school there and settle in Austin, and it didn't work out, and you got to leave. How would you feel? Yeah. I know he's motivated now, though. Oh, yeah. Definitely motivated. He's the man here. This is the first time that he's been given full reign of an offense. He's looking at third and three. Low snap, but complete over the middle to Max Clare is tight end. 
And Claire's got another first down. That's at the 19. It's an eight-yard pickup. They'll move the sticks. This is air raid offense. Find open grass. Settle down. Don't run into coverage. Simple by Claire. Find the open grass. Stop. Show yourself to the quarterback. Nothing fancy. Seven forty left here in the first quarter. Card caught. Abdul Rahman Yassin. He's a red shirt junior out of Michigan. Let's go down to the field and say hello to the hometown girl, Lauren Sister. What is up, my friends? You know, I wasn't expecting all this rain out here, but hey, we're playing some football. And talking about Hudson Card, he's really starting to settle into his role as QB1 at Purdue. There's a lot of confidence around his abilities as a quarterback and how he fits into this system. OC Graham Harrell thinks the ceiling is extremely high for this guy. After a tough week one loss, he's been in his ear all week, harping on him to play loose, play free, reminding him he is the best player on the field if he allows himself to be so. Yeah, you're right about that. He's also a great athlete. Listen, we know he can throw the football, but they've talked about his running ability, too. Keep in mind, he was a wide receiver in high school there. We know how good his high school was. That, and Purdue's known to pull up these quarterbacks out of Austin. Drew Brees comes yeah. to mind. Yeah, great quarterback lineage yeah. at Purdue. Carr swings it out to Tracy. Tracy down the sideline. He's got another first down, and they move the sticks. How about Purdue offensively, as you said, just methodical. Yeah, I'm watching Virginia Tech defensively, and they're discombobulated. I mean, right now, they're spread out. They have no way of affecting Carr. They're getting no pressure on him. They're not doing the least bit to affect him. Take a look at that list of high school quarterbacks in that area. Yeah, you said the lineage is good. He steps up, Carr does, and voids the rush. Under pressure. And that's incomplete. And that was an example of the rain impacting the pass rush. You saw McCray 56 have trouble cutting the corner as he probably would normally do on a dry field. Watch him come off the edge. He can't really plant and come in there slides away. That ends five straight completions by Carr. Hands this one off to Downing. Downing moves the pile to midfield. Jaden Keller was the first to meet him. Under six minutes left in the quarter. Remember, the game has changed. Most coaches, once they cross midfield, think four downs. So the message is probably already gone to Graham Harrell. Hey, you got two plays here to pick up the first down. It looks like the officials down here at, on the field talking to some of the operational people here at the stadium. And it looks like the rain has subsided here. It was raining really hard, but I, I yeah. would assume they're probably getting a weather check. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Like that, they were they were in rhythm. The office have been opened as shelters, or you may return to your car. So there's the announcement. Again, severe weather is in the area, and they are asking the teams and the fans to leave the field and the fans to take cover here at the stadium. You want to watch another game while we wait? <laughs> Maybe we'll watch another game? <laughs> Looks like we're going to have some time on our Yeah, I think so, yeah. And you're right. From a Purdue standpoint, you got to probably look at this and say, man, we were rolling well. Maybe for Virginia Tech, it gives you the opportunity yeah. to make some adjustments. Yeah, Purdue was doing everything they wanted. They wanted to get card comfortable. They wanted to find some kind of a rushing attack. They had that going. And then they wanted to get their defense squared away 
to where they could make some stops and feel better about themselves after how poorly they played last week. And they got that going. So all that rhythm is now on hold for Purdue. And we just had a big yeah. lightning strike and thunder that just hit yeah. this area. Yeah. So yeah. And generally when you have that, what is it, 30? Left this game in the first quarter when he got rolled up on his ankle. Had to be helped off the field. Wells keeps it over the left side. Nick Scorton makes the stop. And the Ollie Jennings injury is a big loss for Virginia Tech because that is the strength of this offense. They're wide receivers, and they have a good matchup with this defense because of those receivers. Losing him really hurts. Go four wide here. Quickly, the slant, the Gosnell, Stephen Gosnell. Drags the defender across the 35 and finally pulled down at the 39-yard line. Fresno State ate up this defense last week with slants. They were facing man coverage a lot with inside technique, and they beat it. And so Virginia Tech is following that script. And one of the things they're going is with some tempo as Jalen Lane got that forward pass. Sanusi Kane makes the stop for the Purdue Boilermakers. So this is a unique defense. Not a lot of colleges play this style of defense. Virginia Tech staff says they had to, you know, they compare it to what they see in the NFL. And you see, look at that bottom, shallow right. Those are slant routes. Wells to the outside. And it's caught by Daquan Wright. Because they play so much man-to-man, -man, the slant route is available if you can beat your defensive back inside. He's laying inside, but he gets no help from the free safety because the safety plays so deep. Fumble the football! And the Hokies get it back to Nusi K, make the hit. Bajol Tutin. Thank goodness Steven Gosnell was there to recover it. It's a loss of five. And that is a, another good defensive stop for Purdue. They struggled on third down. Just nothing inside and a good hit. That ball comes right out. This has not been a good start for Vatek, but how about, how about Ryan Walters there? Peter Moore punt things away. Marquise Wilson back. Makes the catch at his own 17. Down the sideline. Across the 30. Brought down at the 32. 39-yard punt. 14-yard return. Purdue football. Walters, first season as head coach there at Purdue, replacing Jeff Brom. And I'll tell you what, he, he is a guy that connects with his players. Had the number one defense at Illinois. Here's Card. Takes it. Over the left side, a pickup of three. Walters is a rising star, considered a defensive guru. Was actually kind of a long shot to get the head coaching job at Purdue, but really impressed the committee. And you know, that's the benefit of having a search. You just never know what star you might find. Former defensive coordinator at Illinois, at Missouri, played football at Colorado. Second down. Card flush from the pocket down the sideline. He throws it to Dylan's Downing, and Downing has a first down, and he's close to midfield. And Card is having to move around a bit too much. You know, he's being chased out of the pocket. Got a slight limp too. Slight limp. And remember, they don't have a lot of experience behind him. You want to keep him healthy and in the ball game. But this is an offensive line that's going to struggle to protect him. Pretty young. First and 10 from their own 49. Downing again across midfield. Norrell Pollard makes the stop. I think you might be a little hesitant to run card as much as you might otherwise want, given the little limp and given that you don't have a, an experienced backup behind him. Downing will check out. Maccabee will check in for the Boilermakers. Under a minute left in the quarter. Car complete. That's Abdul Raham Yassin. 
everything is the quick game. Get the ball out fast. Left side of that offensive line, you got a couple of redshirt freshmen over there. Inexperience in the middle. Most experienced offensive lineman is their right tackle, Bow. And once again, they're in Virginia Tech territory. Card now 10 of 13. He's connected with seven different receivers. And he's going downfield. He had the tight end and he overthrew him. And Max Clare, who's already had a couple of catches here today. Yeah, got the matchup he wanted against Lawson. A little nod to the outside and then got behind Lawson. Just a little bit too much on him. Leave it much. I'm feeling four down territory. Four wide for Purdue. Maccabi up the middle. Spins. Puts his head down. Still driving. And he's close to another first down for Purdue. Good decision by offensive court. First and ten. Maccabi cobbled up by the Hokies. And that's a loss of two. Antoine Powell Ryland, APR, makes the stop. Speaking of Hudson Card, you remember when he took on Alabama and he was a Longhorn? This was last year. Remember Clint Ewers had got knocked out with that shoulder injury, and Hudson Card came in and balled. Went 14 of 22, threw for a buck 58 in that game, and had Alabama on the ropes. Card. Going through his progressions over the middle. It's complete to TJ Sheffield, who took a licking. Monsor Delane. That was the most protection card has had all game, and he used it to his benefit, coming all the way back to his right to find his last in the progression. Patience there. It's two down territory if you want. You don't want to settle for a field goal. Third down. Seven for Purdue. They're three of four so far on third down. Card swings it out to the tight end, and he's tripped up. What a play. Keontae Jenkins what a makes play. the stop. See how he fought through that block and still made the tackle? Outstanding. And now you got, you got Purdue looking at a 43-yard field goal instead of a fourth down attempt. That's a heck of a job. Shoestring tackle by Jenkins. Ben Freehill will come in and kick it off. Kick. Richard Jr. out of Illinois. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. And Purdue extends their lead to 10 to nothing here in the second quarter. So far, the Boilermakers have run 27 offensive plays. Virginia Tech, nine, and it's Purdue up 10-0. Our score, Purdue on top of Virginia Tech. Let's take a look at that touchdown run. Yeah, this really starts out. There's nobody home in the middle, no free safety. They run the zone. Look at this tremendous block on the edge, opening up a huge lane. And then what? When you got nothing in front of you, watch Preston Nickel 52. Go find some work. Mm. He finds a little bit of work, and you know Davis ain't getting caught from behind. Well, the, the crazy thing is you began the broadcast talking about how Purdue needed to find their running game. Yeah. So far, they've had touchdown runs of 15 and 21 yards. They have found the outside zone and the counter both working for them. This is Tootin. Coming across field. Breaks a tackle. Tootin down the sideline and forced out of bounds. Across the 30. Partner, we began the broadcast six plus hours ago talking about questions about Purdue, how good Purdue is or could be. Won the Big Ten West last year, expected to be good this season, got upset by Fresno State, which got a lot of people worried. And then Virginia Tech, they're trying to bring back yesterday, the Frank Beamer days, and folks were unsure just how good this Vodtech team might be. Well, starts from the pistol. Malachi Thomas. Give him a pickup of two right up the middle. Jeffrey Emba. 
with the stop. I am always marveling when I look out there and I see their free safety. Thienemann, Thienemann 25, 20 yards deep. Nothing gets by him. He's so far back there as the Purdue free safety. Hey, look at that. Here's Wells. In the flat, Benji Gosnell. They play Thieneman so deep so that he has range. Nothing is too far for him. He can come up. He should be able to get the ball to the sideline to sideline, and the middle of the field is closed because he plays that deep. Third down for the Hokies. Call it third and three. Yeah, good luck running inside. This is a big front. Wells, plenty of time. And that may be a yard short. Benji Gosnell again. Markevious Brown took his legs out. And it is a yard short. And the Hokies will have to punt. That's a little bit of the intimidation factor of this defense. You don't want to try and run inside when you've got Nichols at 300 pounds, Rivard at 335, and Langham at 310. Those are the three guys playing inside. Rivard at 335 over your center makes it hard. Andrew so Saw Sawinski calls for the fair catch and makes it at his own 10. Hey, make sure you kick off your week one NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. NFL Countdown Crew on ESPN and the app. Hey, John Mackerel, he's going to sit down with Aaron Rodgers to talk about playing in the big stage in New York. And they've also got a revealing all-access look at the Dolphins head coach, Mike McDaniel. He opens up really for the first time about his alcohol problems that almost cost him his NFL dreams. We've got those stories and early breaking news, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kickoff. Here's Card in the Boilermakers. Give it to Maccabi. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Carter, let me go back to the decision to play this game, because a lot of folks would wonder why play it after five and a half hours. You heard uh, Lauren talk earlier about the decision to make. There's one group that wasn't represented in the negotiations about whether to play. That's the players. At, at some point in time, a couple years or so, we will see players have a seat at the table about decisions like that. Maccabee again. Caleb Woodson makes the stop for Virginia Tech. And just to keep in mind that Purdue is, they're in school. They started classes in August. With this delay, these players will get home at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And remember, they have not been through this before, this kind of delay. So at some point, there will be a group that represents players to talk about these things. Third and six. Their big play guy is Dion Burks. He's at the bottom of your screen. But pressure forces Card to keep it. And he is definitely shy of a first down. Maybe two yards. Kelly Lawson makes the stop, and Purdue will have to punt it away. Makes me nervous, man, when he takes off with that ball. I mean, given that limp we saw earlier, you know, you want to keep him healthy. This is a design quarterback draw. The fewer hits he gets, the better. But, man, clearly this offense revolves around Card. He's got a chance to have a really special season. Tucker Holloway and Jalen Lane back deep for the Hokies. Jack Ansel will punt it away. Squibb kicks it, and these guys let it go. Takes a good Purdue bounce. That turns into a 50-yard punt. We saw him during the weather delay on a cart with a boot down to the field in Lauren. Yes, 
Yeah, guys, such an unfortunate injury for him. And watching him on the field, you could just see his emotions. He was very disappointed. He was in a lot of pain. They were working on that left ankle, kind of that high ankle area, and he seemed to be grimacing in pain. And they took him in the back. I think they did some x-rays and carted him off the field. No real update on the significance of the injury, but I did run into his brother uh, on the field during the rain delay, and he said, you know, he's going to be all right. So there was a lot of optimism, and I think that's just the kind of kid he is. So hopefully uh, he'll be able to make a pretty good quick comeback and make it back on the field sometime this season. Tootin got the carry bottled up by the Boilermakers now before he ran for 14 yards. By the way, that previous carry by Tootin, first rushing, first down for the Hokies today. More pressure on 83 lane to make plays. And Wells open is Gosnell. Gosnell has dropped at the 35, but it's a first down for Virginia Tech, 20-yard pickup. Jalen Lane, 83, cleared out. Defense with, with, went with him. Gosnell came in behind. He's the transfer from North Carolina. Slant and is thrown behind Daquan Felton. You know why? Because he threw that pick. He, he was slower to deliver that slant behind because he knows the corners are laying inside. Here is that last play we talked about with Jalen Lane. So much attention. Look, two guys go with them. That opens up that curl for Gosnell. Purdue will keep a close eye on Lane. Lane going in motion. Thomas over the right side. Brought down at the 30. OC Brothers makes the stop, but six-yard pickup Smart. for the Hokies. Smart. This defense dares you to run to the perimeter. They, they refuse by alignment to let you run inside. If you want to run, they say, go ahead, outside, but not inside. You're not going in that A gap, B gap. You're not going between the center and the guard. You're not going between the guard and the tackle. We will align and take that away. Third and four. They've yet to convert a third down, and they still haven't. OC Brothers says not having it. You gotta go, right? Got to. You gotta get some momentum. You gotta have something. Now watch. There is number eight for OC Brothers. He is protected at almost all times because of that front. He is free to run to the ball. If you can't get a hat on him, he's gonna make every tackle. And Coach Pry from Virginia Tech is definitely gonna go for it here. So fourth and four. Put Lane in the slot and they store a real route to Tootin. Down the sideline. Leans for the end zone and scores. six and Basil Tootin slides out on a wheel route goes 30 yards and scores great call by Tyler Bowen the offensive coordinator it's the exact same play Fresno State ran last week to get the matchup against a linebacker and also get a big play first touchdown of the season for Tootin that is very smart check and see if Purdue has fixed that problem from last week and they have not on that play. John Love with the extra point. And we got a football game here in Blacksburg. Fourth down and six, no problem. Out of the backfield. That's a linebacker who's got to be out there not. And what a tough finish there by Tootin. All of a sudden, the Hokies are back. Seven plays, 67 yards. They do it in two minutes and 37 seconds. Also got three big explosive plays on that drive. And Kyle Lowe will kick things away. Tyrone Tracy back deep. And it's a touchback. Because it is a game of matchups. Watch here. 
you have Tootin out at the wide receiver spot on a linebacker. Brothers, that's man-to-man -man coverage when he goes in motion. No way that matchup is ever going to work. That is part of the problems with an aggressive defense like this. You put a linebacker on a running back in space, you're going to get bit. And they got bit big time with that. That's a great call by Vautech to empty it out and exploit that. Well, here's Hudson Card. Deion Burks in motion. He goes his way. That was knocked away. Good defensive play. Jalen Jones was right with him. Cannot play that any better than that. Just the second target to Deion Burks, who's their big play explosive receiver. You talk about a defensive back driving on a ball in great position. Watch him settle down and come right back. That is excellent defensive back play. Two running backs with card. They go to the receiver screen, and Abdul Rahman Yassin breaks the tackle and turns a loss into a gain of five. And if you are Vatek, you need some help off the edge. APR, Antoine Powell Ryland, 52, is the guy you need to free up on the edge on this third down. You got to get him to put a little pressure on Card. Card has been very comfortable lately. That's the man that you need off the edge to help you out. Purdue has been 50% so far on third down. Three of six. Card to the outside. That's going to be about a yard short. Max Clare made the catch, but Kelly Lawson made him pay for it. Wow. Now you know the book says this fourth and one, you go for it. And every coach has the book. But not every coach adheres to the book. As you see this really, really good tackle by Lawson. A lot of coaches don't like to go for it deep in their own territory. Hey, Walters is. Two backs, Tracy, Downey, Carr, keeping it. Designing a run, and I don't think he got it. I don't think he got it. He ran into a wall of Hokies. He did not get there. See, what the book doesn't tell you is who you got to block. Look at the effort on that left side, just crushing it back into the backfield and then delaying the cornerback getting in to make the play. That is a turnover. You have set up a team inside your own 34, your own 35-yard line with a little bit of momentum now. Maybe this is the turning point that Virginia Tech needs. They get the football, first and 10. At the Purdue 34. And it's Wells looking left. Dumps it off to Tootin, to the 20, and dropped at the 19. Dylan Finneman makes the stop, but a 15-yard pickup for the Hokies. Again, this airstrike defense plays man coverage about 70% of the time. If you don't get the quarterback on the ground in a hurry, you are putting a lot of pressure on your secondary. Under four minutes until the half. And this defense has a code, and the code is to hit the quarterback, to affect the quarterback. They haven't hit Wells a lot yet today. Keep in mind, Virginia Tech won the toss, opted to defer. They'll get it at the beginning of the second half as we have laundry all over the field. Well start, offense, number 82, five yard literally, first out. Benji Gosno. Keep in mind that Nick Gallo, their star tight end, is out, out for the season with the knee injury, and so a little bit less experience at the tight end spot for Vatek, Virginia Tech. Both teams with a couple of penalties. First and 15. 
They spread them out to identify the man coverage if it's there. It is. Wells trying to set up the screen and Purdue snuffed that out. Virginia Tech is sending a man in motion so that they can quickly identify if there is man coverage. And because the free safety plays so deep, you know that if you can get inside, you've got a slant or a crossing route available. And they, for the viewers who are watching, when that man goes in motion, if that defender runs with him, you know you got man coverage. Exactly. Here's Wells. Stepping up, throwing, tooting, too hot. Too oh, hard. Too, too hot. Too hard, too high. Pumped up there. Juiced up. Take a little bit off that. He's got to throw. Another third down coming for Virginia Tech, who again have yet to convert on third down. And if I am Purdue on the back end, I switch it up. I disguise and show a little man, but come out of that and play a little zone behind it here. That was Kevin Kane, the defensive coordinator for Purdue. Pressure coming, throwing to the outside and incomplete. That is a really good stop for Purdue in a sudden change situation. You got man coverage on the outside. Everybody is plastered to their guy. No chance with the ball that's underthrown. And this is the right decision. When there is a turnover, you want it to hurt for the other team. You've got to get points. Here's Love. Richard Freshman L. Spartanburg, South Carolina. This is from 41 yards out. And it's good. You know, if I'm Ryan Walters, I go to my defense and I go, thank you guys. That was on me. I put you in a bad spot and you held them to three. My bad, okay? Let's go play some more. 17 to 10 now the score. Under three minutes until the half. And keep in mind, Virginia Tech will get the football to begin the second half. They won the opening. Coin toss, opted to defer. Well, all season long, the student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. You can download the Taco Bell app to learn more. You know, because you have to be aware of momentum in a game, Purdue had control of this game. And then a touchdown by Virginia Tech got them going, got the crowd in it. And in the midst of that, they missed a fourth and one in their own territory, which was a turnover. Now momentum has swung the other way. And now Purdue has to find a way to get it back before the end of the half. Tracy back deep. Kyle Lowe will kick things away. And it's another touchback. So far, Hudson Carr, 14 of 20 for 128 yards. He's been sacked once, no turnovers. You know, when he started the day, he figured he'd play this game, and then he'd get a chance to watch his old team, teammates, Texas, because he quarterbacked Texas against Alabama last year. To give to Maccabee. Maccabee pulled down by Keyshawn Burgos. That's a loss of four. So far, Purdue in their last two offensive series resulted in a punt, and then they turned it over on downs. Simulated pressure. Who's coming? Card. Under pressure. Hit as he throws. Oh, he, and that is complete to Max Clare. He took a big hit up high. A little delayed blitz. Got a hit on Card. Here's Graham Harrell, offensive coordinator for Purdue. 
Does Virginia Tech simulate pressure again, or do they bring it? Three of seven on third down. Third and six. Card. Flushed. And brought down. C.J. McCray. You can see and feel the heat being turned up on that pocket. Again, this is a young offensive line, particularly the left side. They get matchups over there. Watch that left side kind of crumble as you see the pressure come through. And then working his way back, APR. Virginia Tech's going to call a timeout. Minute 27 until the half, and hey, Tech is in some good position here. Again, they get the ball to begin the second half, and they're looking at this like, hey, you know what? We got a couple of timeouts. Maybe we can get another three or seven on the board. Momentum is a fickle thing, man. You know, Purdue had control of this game. Before the, the weather delay, after the weather delay, they were in complete control. And then that short period of time where they gave up the touchdown, and then missed a fourth and one of their own territory, changed everything. Hey, don't forget, the 54th season of Monday Night Football kicks off. Bill squaring off against the Jets, 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. Peyton and Eli, they're back for their third season on ESPN2 and ESPN Plus. And coverage begins with Scott Van Pelt as well. Boilermakers punt that one away. This is Jalen Lane, and he is smothered at his own 29. Let's take a look here at Grant Wells. Yeah, he has been on fire, missed a couple throws, but by and large has stayed alive, and managed to avoid the pressure in the pocket and has been perfect when he recognizes the man-to-man -man coverage and getting the ball to the right guy. Got a minute 19, two timeouts. Lane in motion. Wells looks his way. Makes a move across the 40. And there's a flag though in the backfield. Let's see what the call is. Riley Johnson is our referee. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number zero. 15 yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run and an automatic first down. That's on Jeffrey Emba, the transfer out of Auburn. And we've talked about the code of this defense is to affect, impact, and hit the quarterback. You don't want to do it late, though. Watch zero inbox top. That is a full three steps too late. And so now you add 15 to that 18 yard pitch and catch. The previous play is under further review. And so now they'll take another look at it. And you had talked about the, a number of targeting calls from last week. Yeah, it's been some time this week texting with Steve Shaw, the coordinator of officials. And he noted that targeting calls are up the first couple of weeks of the season, but that is normal, typical of the last three years. And a lot of it has to deal with really players not training for these types of tackles preseasons. You see the free safety, Dina Man, lowering his head and leading with the crown. And there's a lot of that early season. And we talked to Brent, Brent Pry about that. He said, yeah, you know, you get the attention of players when you have a game or two because you don't coach it as much during the preseason. So we expect the targeting to go down over the next couple of weeks. They had two of them talking about Virginia Tech just last weekend as well. Yeah, this is not a defenseless runner. This is leading with the crown of the helmet. And so you need to lead with the crown. You need an indicator lowering the head and you need forcible contact anywhere on the body. It doesn't have to be the head. So I think this is going to be a targeting call, and they're going to lose Dina Man. <laughs> Boy, a big loss, you know, the rest of the game. The guy had 10 tackles last week and a pick. He was the Big Ten freshman of the week. After further review, there was no foul for targeting. Oh, wow. 
Oh, wow. Didn't think so. I didn't think so. Really? Didn't think so. Wow. I'm surprised. He clearly was not a defenseless player, but I thought they were going to uh, get him with leading with the crown. Well, good for him. Good that he gets to stay in. Nonetheless, it is still first down. First and 10. Virginia Tech has it at the Bullet Makers 37. Here's Wells, looks right, throws, and that's complete to Lane. It's another first down for Virginia Tech. Cam Allen forces him out of bounds, but it's a 13-yard pickup for the Hokies. And yeah, we talked about Lane having to be the key guy with Jennings out. And he is so tough to cover because of his change of direction. Man-to-man -man coverage is really difficult with him. Lane in the slot. Top of your screen. Wells, flushed and sacked. Isaiah Nichols. Yeah, they brought a little twist and some pressure. Nichols came through free. Brothers was also coming up inside. You see they brought six that time. Not enough, not enough protection, not enough time for Wells to recognize it. Virginia Tech could call a timeout. They're looking now at second and 17. Yeah, as a quarterback, you have to know the closer you get to the goal line, the more the pressure gets dialed up. You have to expect six-man pressure and identify it and be ready to get rid of the football. Here's Brent Prime. Now in his second season as head coach. Former defensive coordinator at Penn State, where he spent five seasons. He black back here in Blacksburg. Keep in mind, he was the defensive grad assistant under Frank Beamer from 95 to 97. So he knows and loves this area. He's not afraid to embrace Beamer ball. Thinks that's what's needed here, being connected to the community. Malachi Thomas is checked into the backfield. Wells. Got a lot of room to run. Gets back those penalty yards. Hey, because just a, a the closure on that targeting call, the replay officials felt like the crown of the helmet was not involved on that hit, which is why they did not call targeting. You know, the six-inch crown, they felt like it got the lower part. So good call there. Third and 11. Again, Hokies have not converted a third down yet. Wells looking left. Got a man wide open on the slant. Daquan right. And he's brought down inside the 10 at the 5. Clock continues to tick. Thieneman saved a touchdown. Clock shouldn't be an issue. They've got a timeout. They don't have to rush. Wells rolls. Throws to the end zone. He was looking at Stephen Gosnell. You see some of the same issues in the secondary for Purdue as we saw last week against Fresno State. This is just Cam Allen guessing, looking outside on his man who runs back inside on him. He is thinking outside when he actually he runs inside on him. Juan right. 24 seconds left in the half. Wells looks to Tootin and just throws it away. Third and goal coming. If you're Wells, you have to expect you got to get a fair amount of heat right off the bat. Can you get your matchup? Let's see if he can go to Felton, number nine. 
They throw it to Tootin. He was under pressure and another flag. Kadron Jenkins applied the pressure. And let's see if they're going to call another defensive penalty on Purdue. Personal foul. Roughing the pass here. Defense. Both is half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first out. That is a huge call. It keeps the drive alive and gives Vontek another shot. Now, this may be just a low, low hit on the quarterback. Free safety, Theonan. Yeah, diving at the lower legs. First and goal now. You got time for a couple plays. Wells to the end zone. He's got a man touchdown. Jalen Lane. You said momentum is something. And it's the Hokies with all of it right now. You put your left foot in. <laughs> Shake it all about. You didn't do the hokey pokey in the last break, did you? <laughs> That's because little baby didn't do the hokey pokey, huh? <laughs> Love with the extra point. And just like that, we're tied up at 17. I want you to see Jalen Lane and his change of direction on what is a beautiful route. We have seen Virginia Tech work the slant routes all day. He gives a nod to the slant inside and is out to the corner. Pitter-pat, pitter-pat. No chance at all for Marquevious Brown, who's their best cover guy, to get on him. Talk about change of direction. Wow. Keep in mind, we talked about this when you talked about momentum. Remember when Purdue, who had all the momentum, went for it on fourth down in their own territory. Since that time, Virginia Tech has scored 10 points. That's been the biggest call of the game so far. Fourth down inside your own 35-yard line with a 10-point lead. And they go for it and lose it. Ran the quarterback, didn't get close. Done, not a big fullback, but ran the quarterback, didn't get it, gave the momentum. Virginia Tech now has seized control of the game for the last six, seven minutes. And get the football to begin the second half. Indeed. Lowe will kick things away. Tracy Downing back deep for the Boilermakers. Let's see if Purdue just sits on it and regroups. Well, that, that would be my advice here. Keep in mind the aggressive nature of the defense. Not that it's anything wrong. I like that style, but they have to be smarter about the quarterback. Two big penalties, two big hits on the quarterback has cost Purdue in this first half. And we will only have a 10-minute halftime because of the extensive weather delay that we had here. Here's Maccabi. Turns it into a touchdown, and they were back in the game. And Virginia Tech scored on their last three offensive possessions, and now it's all tied up at 17 as we begin the second half, and now down to the field in Lauren. I talked to Pry there at halftime, and he said what happened there in the last 10 minutes was complimentary football. He said we were finally able to do something with those defensive stops. They were able to start moving the football well on offense through the air, but also able to get the run game going. It was important and key for them to get Tootin going, and that was a big thing for them this entire week. They harped on it all week. We've got to be more productive in the run game. Well, Tootin gets the carry again, and to that end, Lauren, you know, before the rain, Purdue had racked up 122 
yards of total offense. Virginia Tech had just 18. After the weather delay, Purdue racked up 79 yards of offense. Virginia Tech, 161. Here's Wells. Over the middle. And picked off by Finneman, the freshman. He got a pick last week, gets another one this week. Interception. First down, Purdue. And Purdue comes out with a little bit of a twist to their defense. We saw a bunch of man coverage in the first half. They tweaked this, and look what it is. It's a zone coverage, ball thrown behind, and Thena Man is there for his second pick of the season, playing that center field spot, just waiting. A beautiful disguise, and a ricochet could change momentum. And I think Thieneman's saying, well, that's why I'm 20 yards deep, because I am just sitting back and laying in the cut, and he comes up with an interception. Maccabee gets the carry. Maccabee cuts it back, spins. And finally brought down inside the 35-yard line. Six-yard pickup, Jalen Jones. He's a young man who moved from receiver last season. Now in the defensive secondary for Virginia Tech. Maccabee with 39 yards rushing. And boy, APR just blew that play up. Yeah. Hey, because let's go back to that interception for a second. I want you to see the adjustment Purdue made coming out in the third quarter. Watch 21 in the middle of your screen. Not man coverage. He is up through the line of scrimmage. He flies back to play a deep half. And that allows Thieneman, the other safety, to play the zone. Totally unexpected for Grant Wells and the ricochet, the pick, momentum change. Third down. Card throwing high incomplete missed him had TJ Sheffield overshot it missed him you know Purdue started this game three of three on third down since then have gone 0 for six yeah they're going for it here are they no they're gonna they're gonna kick they're gonna punt but he had Sheffield completely open and I keep wondering where is Dion Burks they have not found him. And look at this, wide open, a little excited, ball too high, didn't get a get off a good throw. And so we'll punt things away. Will you hear me about Burks? Oh yeah, Tucker Holloway's back deep. Burks only two targets, no catches so far. He is their big play guy. Tracy tried to down that one. Let's see if they did they slap that in. They did. They downed it there at the one. Hey partner. You know, the book would have said that they should have gone for it on that fourth down. And our score panel lit up green with that fourth down saying, that's a risk you should take. But Purdue didn't take it there. Let's see here. Where the ball, there it is. It does touch the goal line. So it'll be a touchback for Virginia Tech. This is the ACC on ESPN. Third quarter. We played a couple of minutes, tied up at 17. Wells throwing high to Daquan Wright. And yeah, Wells has to recognize that he's getting his own coverage now. They, they were hurting Purdue so much with the slants and the outs and the man coverage. The third quarter adjustment has been more zone coverage. He has to recognize that and not throw it the same way. Virginia Tech will go with four wides. Here's Grant Wells throwing it. He's got a man down the scene. Yeah, yeah. Day one Lofton See, and incomplete. Discombobulated. That's man coverage. All you got to do is put that ball up and let his man go run get it. You know, and, and he's a little too pumped up when he sees that, and he didn't give it enough air. Now this is man coverage. There's your guy. Let him go get it. Throw that ball to the sideline, give it air, and you got a big play. Third and 10. Virginia Tech, one of six. 
on third down. And across is Daquan right, right across midfield. And Wells comes right back. That is a great throw against man coverage. He got a crossing route. Put it in front of his guy. Let him run with the ball after the catch. It's a simple crossing route. It always beats man coverage. Hard to stay up with that across the field. 22-yard pickup. Here's Tootin to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You know, we, we talked about this Purdue defense having a code, and its code being hit the quarterback. They've hit Wells six times already. Defense has to have a code. Man has to have a code, right? Omar, the wire. Second and nine. Wells throwing and then throws it away. You know how a team takes on the personality of its coach? Absolutely. Ryan Walters, defensive guru, is he believes in being aggressive. And, you know, he, he fits right in with that, with that team. Here's the offensive coordinator, Tyler Bowen, in the beard. Yep. Man without the glasses. He has settled his team. Coached the tight ends last season, third nine. Under pressure and sacked. Kadron Jenkins had six tackles, two tackles for loss, had a sack last week. Oh, that is what this defense is designed to do. These edge guys, Jenkins and Scorton on the edge, they are supposed to be the pressure guys. The big three guys in the middle simply keep you and dare you to run. Those edge guys, they're the playmakers. 13 yard loss. T.J. Sheffield back deep for Purdue, standing at his own 31. Peter Moore will kick it away and punt it away. Short punt. And Sheffield tried to draw a fall on it. And there was a little bobble, and he get some extra pushing and shoving. You know, all things considered, five and a half hour delay, I, this game has been pretty cleanly played. When you talk about this Purdue Boilermaker squad, they look to rebuild under their head coach, Ryan Waters, who's just 37. Well, so is the staff young. I mean, the average age of this coaching staff for Purdue, 39 years old. Yeah. They'll, uh, they'll learn. They learned some things last week, learned some things this week. That means the players are drinking Gatorade, the coaching staff drinking Similac. <laughs> <laughs> Card. And how about Jalen Stroman? Coming up, making the hit on Max Clare. What do you got, Lauren? Uh, Coach Walters, you know, he says he can connect, connect with these guys. Same music, same video games. And oh, by the way, he can put down in the weight room. You heard him last night tell us. I said, quantify that for us. He said, well, you know, I could uh, get in there and bench 300 pounds. And he claims he's stronger than the rest of the guys. And before, he was a little bit weaker than those guys. So he does 305 times. He's jacked. He is. Card throwing over the middle, and that's complete. Finally. Finally, Deion Burks, the redshirt sophomore, makes the play. We, Dorian Strong with the stop. We asked the question at the beginning of the third quarter, where is Deion Burks? Middle of your screen. Deep, deep crossing route. Perfectly thrown ball. Plenty of time for Hudson Card. Last five possessions. For Purdue, no first downs. Finally, they get one. Carr, play fake. Throwing over the middle and incomplete. He was looking at T.J. Sheffield, but Jalen Jones once again running right with him. And again, credit Jones because he was a receiver last season, now playing in the defensive secondary. Yeah, and playing it well. I still like the matchup with Burks 
He was uh, strong last time, running a, a route down the middle. But this time, that ball was just hanging in the air a bit too long. The Bergs at the top of the screen seems to be matched up solo against Strong. That is a really good matchup. From their own 45, Carr keeps it. And tripped up by APR at the 49-yard line, four-yard pickup. Yeah, Strong and uh, Burks are going at it out there in their matchup. Strong is a very aggressive corner. Very aggressive, uses his hands well. And this matchup will continue. If I'm Purdue, I, I come back to that matchup because Burks is a really good receiver. Give him a little space, and that thing's going to be something. That's Burks in motion. And he swing it out to the back. That's Tracy. Cross midfield. And about two yards shy of a first down. What do you do? The book says go. Our marker is all lit up green that this is a fourth and one, fourth and two where you should go. But I think Purdue's been a little gun shy after that fourth and one changed the momentum. So they'll punt it away. Ansel has come in. Tucker Holloway standing at it inside his 10. Fair catch caught four. At the seven. 46 yard punt. Virginia Tech football when we come back. Defensive coordinators. Waters was at Illinois, and Pry was defense coordinator at Penn State. This game was 10-10 at the end of regulation, and it went into not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. How about nine overtimes before Illinois finally came out on top, 20 to 18. And in fact, Coach Waters told us. That game got me paid. Got me paid. <laughs> I remember that game. Got me paid. Got me paid. Got That's him when a everyone bag. started to take notice of what I was doing. Hand off to Thomas. He's got a first down. Yavatek has to find something on the ground. 12 yards rushing total for the game right now. Oh, they say he's a pickup of nine, a yard shot. And he'll get it again and falls forward for the first down. Clock running. Wells looks, throws, and he's got a man. Now he's still loose. Cuts back and brought down at the 41 yard line. 39 yard pickup. Uh, Gosnell has really stepped up with Ali Jennings out, made some big catches, and they'll go fast here. But again, a little zone defense, which they don't play a lot of, and you see the wide open holes. He's out of North Carolina. Here's a slant. The Gosnell incomplete. Marquise Wilson in coverage. Purdue has mixed up their coverages a lot more this half than they did the first half. They're better at man, and their zone coverage has been picked apart when they've gone to it a couple times. Jalen Lane on the sideline for Virginia Tech. Looks like he's trying to work out something, maybe a cramp or something. Here's Wells. Look like they're going to do the option. He keeps it. Slides down, one-yard pickup. Yeah, they really don't have a rushing attack today. That is yard number 13 for them. And that really hurts. It puts so much more pressure on the passing attack. Remember, Wells has been hit seven times already in this ballgame. And Purdue 
they'll, they'll revert to their nature and dial up to get more hits on him. Third nine. Wells and brought down by Cadron Jenkins. What a job by Jenkins. Didn't overplay it. He was the one man that Wells had to beat. But watch Jenkins him. Watch him play this. Watch. Doesn't let the blocker get the edge on him and uses his athleticism to get by 61, the uh, the left guard more to make the make the play. Sawinski back deep for Purdue. And the Hokies will down it at the five. And how about the guy coming flying down there is Cole Beck. And he's wearing number 25, which takes on significant meaning here. Virginia Tech, that's Frank Beamer's old number. And, and that's the person who gets that number. It's a special honor. And Cole Beck coming up big here for the Hokies on special teams. Get help reaching your goals. Five is Purdue. Maccabi straight up the middle he falls forward at the 10 since the first quarter the Purdue offense has only produced one first down not gonna be 41 yards on the ground five minutes left in this quarter and it's Maccabi again, bounces off a of one hokey to the outside, and he's got a first down. What a slashing run. Player down. Can't tell who the player is. It looks like it could be Keyshawn Burgos. Yeah, good to see him sit up. He's the sophomore out of uh, Chesterfield, Virginia. And the good thing is yeah. running off on his own power. That's good. And it's the that. good news for Purdue is they've gotten themselves out of basically their backs against the wall against the, in their own territory and got a little bit of breathing room and got another first down. That's because of the mechanic, Maccabi. That yeah. tough road, tough run by him. He's a team mechanic, loves cars. Flag over the middle. Burks is open. Burks, oh, overshot him. But there's a flag. There's a flag on the play. He had him. Quarterback can't overthrow receivers on deep balls. You only get so many chances. Can't have the long foul ball. Now that penalty would have negated it, but still, when you have Burst out there, you gotta give him a chance. Give him a chance to go get it. And this is just too much. Let him go get it. Give him a chance. Can't overthrow him. So now, first and 19, Maccabi cuts it back. Gets Hard back most of the penalty yards. Kelly Lawson with the stop. Hard to believe that Maccabi was a walk-on. Got a scholarship right away from Walters when he was hired. Young man, talk about him being a mechanic, has a 93 Mustang that he uh, whips around in. Second, 
Second and ten. That's over the middle again to the tight end, Max Clare. I'd whip around in a 93 Mustang if I had one. Oh, absolutely. That's another first down for Purdue. You, you can see there he is. Even all the guys, even the coaches say, hey, I trust him with my car. The guy's always working on somebody's car. Empty set five wide here for the Boilermakers on first down. Card again and for Burks. This time he got him. Correction, that's T.J. Sheffield. Gave him a chance. A little bit more air under the ball. Hudson Card learned from the last throw. Give your guy a chance. And this is just a slot fade, and he gave him a chance. 36-yard pickup, pressure for Card, and he's down. Kelly Lawson was the first guy there. Yeah, a little extra pressure, delayed blitz by Lawson. He waited for things to open up and had a clear path, completely clear path to Hudson Card. Yeah, it's a loss of eight. Timely call. You see him coming through, little delay blitz after the blockers had declared who they were going after. Lawson had a clear path. Handoff, Downing. Downing over that right side. Stroman wanted the Hokies to bring him down. He's starting to think uh, four down territory. Third coming. Inside the 40. Our numbers say if it's fourth and five or less, they should go. What can Three they pick up here? On third down, Burks at the top of your screen. Dorian Strong in coverage. Carr steps up, fakes the throw, keeps it. And he's run out of bounds. Inside the 35. Uh, he, he had pain. The defensive coordinator had pain. That's Chris Marve, the defensive coordinator, had pain as the spy trying to mirror um, Card. And Card did a nice job of getting away and giving them a shot at a 50-yard field goal. This will be from 50 from Ben Freehill, the redshirt junior, who just took over the kicking duties really for the first time in his career. He's a transfer from Oklahoma State. Already made one, but there's a whistle and a timeout by Purdue. They only had 10 guys on the field. Coach Walters says, hey, hey, I had to get that timeout. Missing an edge guy. So you count the numbers. Uh, where's where's number eight? It's number eleven, not out there. Mm -mm. Yeah, uh oh, I was I was on that team. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on field goal team. Uh, forgot about that one. Max Claire, 86. Mm -hmm. Richard, freshman. So Freehill has already hit one field goal. Let's see if he can hit this one from 50. He's got plenty of leg, and it's to the right. Remind me of something. How long has it been since Purdue scored? It's been a while. What, the first quarter? Yeah. You know, and kudos to the Virginia Tech fans. Yeah. The fact that anybody came back yeah. after a five and a half hour delay right. is amazing. And they've made some noise, particularly that student section behind the band. Mm -hmm. 
Under a minute left. Jalen Lane appears to be injured for the Hokies, so he has not been in. Tootin gets the carry, and as soon as he got it, Nick Scorton grabbed him, brought him down. One of the captains of this team. He's just a sophomore. Hey, take a look at those big guys in the middle. They line up in, in a, a lot of the time in what's called a bear front where they cover the two guards in the center. It's almost impossible to run inside on those guys. 300 pounders. Can't move them easily. Wells. Here's Gosnell. And that's a first down for Virginia Tech. And that's going to be the last play of this quarter. 2017. Second and 25. Wells throws. And that's incomplete. Yeah, good disguise by Purdue defensively. They showed man coverage again and then came out of it and played zone. And you saw the throw. We saw the confusion. That ball was thrown in between two receivers. They are doing a good job now of getting into Wells' head. He's not seeing it clearly right now as much as he did in the first half. That's Kevin Kane, you saw, defense coordinator, Purdue. Third and 25. They've got everybody back at the 40. Nothing deep. They were going to allow them to have the underneath stuff, and that falls incomplete. Uh, you heard Brent Pry talk about Grant Wells needing to throw the ball well in his interview uh, with Shimmy. Hey, he's got to see things a little better, too. Not, not, just, not just throw it well. He's got to recognize when that disguise is out there. T.J. Sheffield standing back at his own 35. Peter Moore to punt it away for Virginia Tech. Good kick. Booming kick. Backs him up to his own 15. Sheffield gets it back to the 25. 56-yard kick. It's about a six-yard return. Hey, this season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund, and we say thank you, Allstate. Tied up at 17. And right now, Kelly Lawson, number 21, is the big problem for this Purdue offense. He's been wrecking it. Ten tackles already and a sack. He's the one guy you have to identify if you're Purdue and get a body on him. Swings that one out to Claire. The tight end breaks the tackle down the sideline. Claire. Would look like about a five-yard pickup all of a sudden. You, you think he was determined to make up for not being on that field goal team? Oh, my God. <laughs> he picks up eight. Yeah, he comes right back out and says, I forgot about that. I'm gonna, making a good play here. Good for him. Maccabee. First down. Purdue spent the first half searching for a rushing attack and found that their counter zone worked them a little bit, their outside zone. They have 101 yards rushing. And that still may be the place to go. The two touchdowns came on the ground. Down the sideline is short, but came back is Drew Bibber. There's the that incomplete. man. There's that man. Lawson. Hey, there's a reason why he's on Bruce Feldman's freak list. This guy's got an 82-inch wingspan. He broad jumps 11-2 as a 39-inch vertical. Yeah, yeah, and you saw some of that on that play. Athleticism. This is a guy playing linebacker. He's 30 yards down the field making plays. The draw to Tracy spins off a hokey. 
And brought down at the 43 by Jalen Stroman, five-yard pickup. And if you're thinking four-down territory, you got to get to fourth and three or less to make it go. But third down has been a huge problem for them. They are 0 and 8, 0 for 8 after starting three for three. Deion Burks at the bottom of your screen. Matched up against Dorian Strong. Three of 11 on third down is Purdue. Stepping up. He's got a first down. Cross midfield. And brought down at the 45 by Keyshawn Burgos. 12-yard pickup by Card on the quarterback keep. You need your quarterback to make two or three key first down runs in a game if you're going to have a shot at winning it. That was one for Purdue. Maccabee. Four tough yards. 61 plays for this offense tonight. They had 65 last week. This is a better pace for Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator. He wants to be up around 70, 75 runs, 75 plays. They've run it 32 times. They've thrown it 30. So they have balance so far. Stepping up and throwing it away is Card. Strowman applying that pressure to the Purdue quarterback. I really think they need to move Deion Burks around. You know, if he's not in the slot, move him off the line of scrimmage. Put him in motion. Get him away from the press coverage at the line of scrimmage. Give him a chance to be on the move. Right now, he's on the outside. That's too easy for Strong to get his hands on him. Third down and six. Maccabee bounces it to the outside. Maccabee dragged down at the first down marker by Alan Tisdale. Man, is he a hard, tough runner. Mm. A slasher. He's got one speed. It is go, go, go. 100 miles an hour. How quickly he attacks that hole. Tyrone Tracy has come in to give Maccabi a breather. He's got it now. Tracy up the middle. Tracy spins. He's still on his feet. Tracy inside the 20 and brought down at the 13-yard line. 22-yard pickup for the Boilermakers. Yeah, and give credit to the right side of that line. Jalen Grant, the right guard, and Bo, the right tackle, did a tremendous job. Watch the right side. Turn that thing inside out. A huge hole inside Tyrone Tracy. And now the running game, as we talked about a few minutes ago, has come back to life. And for the first time, it seems like in forever, Purdue is inside the red zone. And it's Tracy again. And brought down at the 10. Come back with the counter, which has been one of the key running plays they've used today. After searching to find something since they didn't run the ball well, last week at all. You can see what both of these squads have done on the ground. Buck 50 for Purdue, 13 for Virginia Tech. Second down and seven. Maccabee is checked in. Burks at the bottom of your screen. I still prefer him in the slot. Here's Maccabee. He's trying to bounce it to the outside. And he's going to lose about three to four. Cole Nelson out of Fort Worth. One of the first guys to grab him and wrap him up. It's a gang of orange shirts. Hey, you know, the, the orange shirts, that's a different look. I, personally, I love the old, the burgundy, but I'm not mad about them going orange. 12 plays is what this drive has been so far. Now third down and 11. How aggressive will you be? You got three points in your back pocket. Burns is down at the bottom. 
Under nine minutes left. Carr looking. Time. Swings it out. Maccabi inside the five. He's got a first down. How tough is he? Oh, man. Tough as a mechanic, right? You ain't lying. I mean, this guy had no business getting that much yardage. Dragged two would-be tacklers down to the two-yard line. He's just a, an outlet receiver here. Makes a guy miss and drags a couple. You know what? Give him the ball. He needs a blow. Yeah. Tyrone Tracy has checked in. Design run for Card. Touchdown, Purdue. His first rushing touchdown of the season. He gets in from two yards out. This little quarterback sweep outside. A nice little block inside by three. Tracy to lead his guy to the outside. Numbers worked for Purdue there. Well, I tell you what, that drive was certainly in the cards for Purdue. 13 plays, 74 yards, six and a half minutes. Eight minutes left in this game. I see what you did there. Thank you. In the card for it? Yeah. Yeah. They played their ace of spades right there. Eight straight third down conversions. They went three for three on third down Timely. on that last drive. Timely. Here's Tootin from his own end zone. Tootin across the 35 and brought down at the 36. Let's go down to the field in Lawrence Sisler. Wanted to give you guys a quick update on the receiving core. Obviously, Ollie Jennings out. Jay Lane has been grabbing his right leg. He's been on the uh, sideline grabbing that right hamstring, working that out. He's been on the bike doing some cut drills. Uh, some bicycle kicks, but he walked over to his teammates and he pulled the gloves off and he gave them the nod and said, yep, yep, you guys got this. Well, they're two top targets, Jennings and Lane. They will be without him. Down seven, under eight minutes to play. Here's Grant Wells. Throwing to the sideline and high. Emba applying the pressure. Well, with Jennings and Lane out, the ball has been spread around a lot more. Gosnell has really been huge mm -hmm. for Virginia Tech tonight. And they'll need more of that in this last uh, seven minutes and 46 seconds. Tootin or Malachi Thomas, and he is wrapped up and that's a loss of a couple and by again well this is a big down for virginia tech third down keep in mind your quarterback has been hit 10 times and purdue has just come in with their third down pass rush specialist team they look like they're going to play coverage but you have to protect wells Simulated pressure. Here's Wells. Under pressure as you talk about a sack. Nick Scorton, the captain. Listen, Scorton and Jenkins last weekend accounted for 11 quarterback pressures, and you can see why. Yeah, no, no simulation there. Scorton, there you see, bottom of the screen, number five. Kind of indicating maybe not coming. Here he is. Nice spin move. Easy sack. Young man changed his name from Caraway to honor his dad. And boy, is he having a game. Yeah, daddy's got to love that. Sawinski back deep for Purdue at his own 40. Third down defense for Purdue has rebounded from last week. Shutting it down today. Only two of 11 conversions on third down tonight after allowing 11 of 17 last week. And so far for the second straight week, Purdue no turnovers. Good coverage, and Cole Beck making the stop. Purdue football with six minutes to play when we come back. 
minutes, 30 seconds left. They're going to start from their own nine, and they got a new quarterback. Kyron Drones, the redshirt sophomore out of Texas. Wow. The transfer from Baylor seeing his first action. And Drones throwing. Got a man. Oh, and he's open. Cross the 30. Daquan Wright with a strike from Drones. How clutch is that? That man's been sitting on the sideline for hours, seven, eight hours. And you put him in with two minutes to go? Drones again. That one's too high for Daquan Wright. Now, now Drones is more athletic and mobile than Grant Wells. Remember, Wells have been hit an awful lot. Don't know if anything's up with him, but there's the big catch and run by Wright. You know, how tough is this? You come in cold and deliver a strike over the middle of the field? Wow. He's a big kid, 6'2", 234. They say he's built more like a linebacker. He can run it. But boy, they said he can execute the entire playbook. Two minutes left in his game. Drones throwing and complete. All right. Tucker Holloway. Because one question, where's he been? I mean, we were told we would see both quarterbacks tonight but not after 58 minutes of play would you expect a guy to come in off the bench. And remember, we had a five and a half hour delay. He hasn't had a real proper warm up since about noon. Under two minutes left. You get a first down, clock stops here under two minutes. And you know, they pull the flag, no, no, here he comes. I was gonna say, Sanusi Kane was all over Gosnell. Pass to Deferis. Defense, number 21. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So starting at their own nine, now all of a sudden they're at the 45. Yeah, you see the restriction there, wrapping up an arm. Easy call. Here's Grant Wells with his helmet. He looks fine. He's just out of the game. Drones is going to keep it. Cross midfield. Lowers his shoulder. Oh, oh Marquise my Brown. Goodness. Did you see him finish that run? He wasn't looking to slide. He was looking for Marquise Brown. One on one. Number one on number one. Wow. Buck 45 left in this game. Down seven. Jerome throwing and incomplete. Again, looking at Holloway. Let's watch the finish of Drones on this run. He's not sliding. He's like, what, what tackler? Show me a tackler. Take this. Ooh. Ouch. Second down and 10. From the Purdue 43. Drone throwing to the outside. Incomplete. He had Daywan Lofton. And that was one you got to put some touch and drop it. Yeah, he was under duress. He was under a lot of duress. But you're absolutely right. You got to give your guy a chance. This guy has been several hours on the sideline now. Trying to hang in there against a shot into his sternum. Third and ten. Reduce showing like some pressure's coming. Drones flushed and throws it away. Pass intended for Thomas incomplete. Fourth down. Key down for the game. Yeah, this could be the game. Yep, and Purdue defensively, what do you give them now? What do you expect them to show you? They've played a lot more zone this half. On this fourth and 10, 
Will they pressure with more? I think they're going to show more zone here and not try to give up a big play in man coverage. No Jennings, no lane for Virginia Tech. And timeout by Purdue. They want to talk timeout. about it. Purdue. Second of this half. The game coming. Fourth and ten coming here from Virginia Tech. When I started at the Purdue 43, they've got the red shirt sophomore, Chiron Drones, in at quarterback, seeing his first action basically of the game on this drive. This could be the game. Drones throwing down the sideline, throws it up and incomplete. He was looking at Daquan Felton. Yeah, it's it's the wrong choice. There was coverage over there. The choice was Gosnell, who was running a route over the middle, had the first down marker. Now, this is coverage on the outside, single man, but you got safety coming over to help as well, but not enough room. The play was Gosnell, number 12, who was open in the middle. The Purdue defense has pitched a shutout here in the second half. Thanks to that man and their yeah. defensive coordinator, Kevin Kane. You know, it was asking an awful lot for Chiron Drones to sit all afternoon, all evening, and then come in to the game in the last two minutes and to save it for Virginia Tech. Maccabee running hard for the Boilermakers. Here's the timeout. And keep in mind for Virginia Tech, Jalen Lane out of the game with an injury. Ali Jennings left in the first quarter with an injury. Daquan Wright got injured in the previous series. So they're three top receivers out injured in this game for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech again, trying to put an end to that streak of losses against non-conference Power 5 squads. Last time they've gotten a victory was 2017 against West Virginia. So the, the rebuild for Virginia Tech continues. The questions, the concerns still there. You know, Brent Pry, second year, second game, got a win last week, trying to bring back the shine for Virginia Tech. It's been since what, 2010? Yeah. Since they Virginia won Tech conference. won the conference? Yeah. yeah. Here's Maccabee, and he's loose. Maccabee. Maccabee Finally brought down at the Hokies 35 yard line, but not before a 20 yard pickup for Devin Mockaby, who's knocking on the door of 100 yards rushing. Uh, he's been a tough runner and pass receiver all day. A little slashing, tough runs. And this puts Ryan Walters in position for his first win as a head coach. Makes him feel a lot better than having dropped that game at home last week to Fresno State. And now let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings. They are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Georgia continues to roll. Alabama trailing Texas 13 to six. Nobody looks better than Florida State right now after the way they wall up LSU. And uh, if Texas hangs on there, knocks off Alabama, can you imagine? Can you imagine what will be said next week? And you can catch that Texas-Alabama game on ESPN. And Purdue now just a minute away. I think at this point, Purdue is really happy with the decision to stick around and play this game tonight. There was discussion about whether the game should be played. 
how long they would wait. They felt like they worked too hard, put too much into it this week, and they did not want to give up a bye week later in the season. They wanted to play this game tonight. You know, they call Purdue the, the cradle of quarterbacks. But when they look at the tape, all three of the touchdowns tonight on the ground. Yeah. They had to get something done rushing the ball, and they did 182 yards rushing after they could not run the ball last week. And the important part of that is it takes some pressure off Hudson Carr. Yeah. I mean, he, he is the heart and soul of this offense. But he needed some help, and they provided some help for him. And how about that young man? A year ago, he was the quarterback for Texas in that Alabama-Texas game after Quinn Ewers got hurt. And now he's established himself as the guy here, the first time in his college career that he is the quarterback. A lot of balance for Purdue, but they got it done on the ground. Ran it 44 times, threw it 34. And you're right, Ryan Waters, he said it. There was no way, we had no thought of asking Virginia Tech to postpone this game considering the five hour, 27 minute weather delay we had. He said, we worked too hard. We came here to play, we were gonna play, and they did it, and they've come to Blacksburg and gotten a win, and Waters gets a dunk in his first win as head coach. And Purdue now.